Kailami in general was awesome. One of my favorite tracks I've ever yeah. been to. Um, what is your favorite track if you had to choose? And what is your favorite track car combo um, and why? Oh, that's that's quite a tough question. Yeah, um, on the spot there. On the yeah, spot. Yeah, definitely Have on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, I mean, the Norch Life is not really a fair comparison, to be honest, because it's so different to any other GP track that you ever drive. Um, I would definitely say that is number one, though, because it does still count as a racetrack, so you kind of need to factor it in. Yeah. Um, okay, and then, well, if we talk without that, then we, we take the Norch Life. Norch Life is always king. But after that, if we talk yeah. GP tracks or normal tracks, what would it be then? Um, I would definitely say Spa is up there as one of my favorites. Um, it's quite a cliched one as well. I think most drivers love Spa, um, especially in the DTM car. That was amazing going through a Rouge, which is pretty much flat out in qualifying. And uh, yeah, you're super scared going down into a Rouge in the DTM <laughs> car. I remember that was one of the craziest experiences I ever did. Um, but a cool track that I drove as well in 2018, and I did IMSA as well um, in America. I did the four endurance races with, uh, with Land Motorsport and the Audi. Yeah. And I did Sebring as well, which was really cool to drive. A, a very bumpy, obviously, not a lot of uh, runoff, which I'm not really a fan of, um, as I'm sure most of us aren't. Um, and Watkins Glen was very cool as well. So uh, also a track with very high grip, uh, very smooth, um, a lot of high speed corners in the Audi where um, the car is very edgy on the rear and stuff. So it's a big challenge to the driver. So I'd say probably the tracks in America are very cool. Road Atlanta, also a very cool track. Um, it's hard to pinpoint which track is my favorite, but I would say uh, the American tracks are definitely up there in terms of um, just giving the driver that thrill, you know. Yeah, they're old school, aren't they? I got that. Uh, yeah. I got that late call to replace uh, Bill when he got COVID at the end of yeah. last year with, in Sebring, and they they called it the American Norge Life because of the bumps and the different <laughs> undulations, and it's quite it's quite tricky. And I really enjoyed that race and the whole race experience in in America in general. It's a bit more relaxed and cut back. None of the None of the, let's say, bullshit in terms of huge runoffs because no one likes those, particularly the slightly older drivers. I, I know none of them like the runoffs. I prefer to, if I make a mistake, actually get penalised for it, not just drive around and gain lap time. Is yeah. IMSA or the, the States something that you'd like to get back and do? Um, definitely looking back at it, I, I think IMSA is definitely an option um, that I would love to go back to. Um, I would always try and combine that again with the European programme. Sure. Uh, just purely because of the same reason as I mentioned earlier with Japan and just staying on that radar on Europe. Um, but definitely something I would I would enjoy doing again. Um, Daytona I did as well, which is an awesome race. Yeah. Um, it's it's not such a it's it's a Mickey Mouse track, but I think the the atmosphere at Daytona is really what gives the race that kind of vibe and stuff. So uh, definitely something I would do again. Um, would like to race in America again and who knows maybe we teammates in in uh, LMDH or something who knows <laughs> yeah yeah you never know what's going to happen mate. I would love to be uh, well number one teammates with you because you're bloody fast and that would help and <laughs> number two and number two just the, yeah race in America I really enjoyed my time out there it was it was like really fun at that time there was um still fans but only at 50 percent at the end of last year in the in the Florida state or Miami state so you, you could get the atmosphere and it was still full and ramming. So that was good. And I think once we do get the fans back in Europe, it will be great. Because even the Norge Life last year, you know, having great results and a, and a BMW won three, but there's no yeah. real fans apart from the team that have obviously put loads, uh, loads of work into it. It would be nice to get those back. I don't know how you feel about that, but it's just the fans really, really make the sport. Yeah, especially at the Norge Lifer. Um, yeah. Freaking hell. I mean driving on the Norch Life at night in the 24 hour and you smell the barbecues, <laughs> you see the, the, the drunk people like literally standing on the <laughs> fences and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, good boy, you know, <laughs> cheering for BMW. It's, uh, it's a special feeling. Um, and it's one that you cannot really, um, yeah, you cannot have it without these fans. They are kind of what makes the race what it is. Uh, you arrive on the Wednesday or whatever it is uh, before the weekend and you see all these camper vans on the side, like millions of camper vans, just people staying there for the whole weekend from Wednesday to Sunday. Um, and I think you've got to give it to Germany. They've got probably the most passionate fans um, or one of the most passionate fans in the world, I think. Um, the, especially at the Nürburgring, you know, a lot of people live there. and they, they, I mean, they don't really have a lot of else going on in Nürburgring, <laughs> <laughs> if, if we put it plainly. Yeah. It's a very, it's a very uh, um, isolated place. So for them, I think anything that happens there, they're just happy to, to kind of witness. Yeah, yeah, it's 
Yeah, you always come out of the hotel and there's people stood there and it's the same people every time with the new photographs that they've yeah. taken of, of you at, I say, a Flans Garden or whatever taking off and it's really quite, it's quite a cool experience.